Hi guys, today we'll see the Figo staging of carcinoma endometrium, the latest one. So let's start off with a cl clinical case scenario. A 50-year-old lady presents to us with postmenopausal bleeding. So and we perform an ultrasound or a transvaginal sonography and to find that the endometrial and myometrial thickness is altered and or there is altered ecotexture. So we perform an endometrial biopsy. And the report is as follows. There is a mention of grade and uh, molecular classification. P53 is wild type and MSH and PMS2 are retained. So let's see what this is all about. Before learning about the staging, it is important to understand the grade, histology, LVSI and molecular classifications. So in grade, it is divided into grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3 endometrial carcinoma based on the solid pattern. Grade 1 is less than or equal to 5%, grade 2 is 6 to 50% of solid areas and grade 3 is more than 50% of solid areas. Grade 1 and grade 2 are called as low grade and grade 3 is called as high grade endometrial carcinoma. Coming to histology, it is again divided into less aggressive and aggressive histology. Less aggressive ones or the good histology ones are the endometrioid carcinomas and aggressive ones are the serous carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma, carcinosarcoma, mucinous carcinomas with GI differentiation, mesonephric carcinomas and undifferentiated carcinomas. Basically, anything other than endometrioid variant is considered as aggressive histology. Next, coming on to the lymphovascular space invasion, presence of tumor emboli in more than or equal to 5 vessels is considered as substantial LVSI. Next, moving on to the molecular classification. Based on the mutational analysis, it is divided into good, intermediate and poor prognosis groups. Coming on to the good prognosis group, pole mutations come under good molecular classification. These have somatic inactivating mutations in DNA exonucleus domain. These have exceptionally high tumor burden and are also called as ultra-mutated variants. Coming on to the intermediate group, these include MMR deficient tumors or microsatellite instability tumors and no specific molecular profile groups. And next coming to the poor prognosis, P P53 abnormal mutations are considered as poor prognosis. Now moving on to the actual staging of FIGO, it is divided into four stages, stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. These four groups are further subdivided into A, B and C each. Coming to stage 1A, it is further subdivided into A1, A2 and A3. Stage 1 and stage 2 are surgical or anatomical classifications. That means uh, when you perform a, any imaging like MRI or CT scan or after performing a staging laparotomy, that's how you grade these tumors into stage 1 or stage 2. And they also include histological grading. That means they, they include the type of the tumor that is uh, based on the pathology, whether the grade is high grade or low grade, or if the tumor uh, depends, uh, depending on what type of histology it is, less aggressive histology or a more aggressive histology. Then coming on to the stage 3 and stage 4, these are purely surgical or anatomical classifications. They do not consider histology under uh, th this staging. Next, coming on to the stage 1A1, it involves endometrium. Tumor is limited to the endometrium. Coming to stage A2, it is involvement of myometrium, but it is less than or equal to 50%. That is only the superficial myometrium is involved and there is no LVSI. Coming to stage A3, it is involvement of the adnexa. That is involvement of fallopian tube or the ovary. There is a difference between 1A3 and 3A1, which I will discuss again later. Next, coming on to stage 1B, it is more than or equal to 50% of myometrial involvement with no or focal LVSI. Next, coming on to stage 1C, it includes aggressive histology tumors. 1C and 2C are similar. So in ABC, C carries the highest number of count. So it is the most aggressive uh, histology. In 1C, the tumor is limited to the endometrium. Whereas in 1A1, it was only the low-grade tumors. And coming to 2C, it is aggressive histology with tumor extending to any depth of myometrium. 
Next, coming to 2A, it is the tumor is extending into the cervical stroma. Next, coming on to 2B, it is egg presence of substantial LVSI. A and B groups in stage 1 and stage 2 are low grade tumors that is low grade endometrial tumors whereas C is aggressive histology tumors that we have discussed earlier the serous clear cell and carcinosarcoma and other variants. Next uh, coming on to stage 3, 3A is further divided into A1 and A2. So this classification is purely anatomical or surgical classification. There is no difference between less aggressive or more aggressive variants. So coming to 1A1. It is the extension of the tumor into adnexa, that is into the fallopian tube or into the ovary. It can be either the direct extension or the presence of metastasis. 3A2 is extension of tumor into the subserosa or extension through the serosa. Next, coming to stage 3B, it is slightly a, a little more advanced than the previous one. That means now it has entered into the pelvic peritoneum or along the parametrium and it has two P's and coming to th stage 3C, C1 is involvement of pelvic lymph nodes. C is always, 3C in gynec oncology is always involvement of lymph nodes. So 3C1 is involvement of pelvic lymph nodes, 3C2 is involvement of paraortic lymph nodes below the level of renal vessels. Next coming on to stage 4, 4A is extension into the adjacent hollow organs that is anteriorly to the bladder or posteriorly to the rectum and stage 4b is involvement of peritoneum beyond the pelvis that is omental deposits or anywhere else in the abdomen apart from the pelvis if there are deposits and coming to stage 4c it is distant metastasis that is involvement of abdominal lymph nodes that are above the level of renal vessels or the involvement of bone brain or liver or any lung metastasis. Now I'll discuss the main difference between stage 1A3 and 3A1. So they're both similar. They, in both of these there is extension into the adnexa. But in stage 1A3 it is confined to unilateral like a, a single ovary and the type of histology is low grade endometrioid car carcinoma with limited extension into endometrium or just the superficial myometrium but not the full thickness of the uterus whereas in 3a1 there is full thickness involvement of the uterus and uh, there is in 1a3 there is absence of any other distant metastasis the reason for this difference is limited extension into the ovary of just a low grade endometrioid carcinoma. It could be a synchronous second primary in ovary also. So it just removing the uterus and ovary itself is enough. There won't be a need for any adjuvant chemotherapy or radiotherapy. But whereas in 3A1, there is a need for radiotherapy because the histology is aggressive and even there is myometrial involvement. So that is the main difference between 1A3 and 3A1. In the starting of this video, I have told you that FIGO staging includes the grade, histology, LVSI and molecular classification. But so far, I have not mentioned molecular classification anywhere. So now comes the role where when you do a biopsy or in the hysterectomy specimen, we do the molecular analysis or the mutational analysis. And how it changes the staging is that in stage 2A, that is if there is presence of pole mutations and there is extension into the cervical stroma, that is 2A, it is not considered as 2A and but rather as stage 1 only. And the suffix is added as small m pole mutations. Another important role of performing mutational analysis is in uh, low grade and high grade endometrioid carcinomas. As I have already mentioned, grade 1 and grade 2 are considered as low grade and grade 3 is considered as high grade histology. So in grade 3 high grade endometrioid carcinoma, but it does not come into the classical aggressive variant. It is endometrioid which is less aggressive only. But here comes the role of molecular classification and performing the mutational analysis. So if a high grade that is grade 3 endometrioid carcinoma is pole mutated, then it is classified as low grade variant only. But whereas if it is P53 positive, then it is classified as high grade variant and it is it comes under 1C and 2C. 
The role of molecular classification also comes in prognostication and uh, for use of adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which I'll discuss as a separate video. Thank you.